Hey guys, my name is Tito. I make videos on personal finance on my other channel, on this channel. I talk about other things like today when I'll be reviewing the new Netflix series, The Plan. Now, The Plan is about Kamara, a woman whose husband works for the government and um, he's been in some financial misconduct. He's been being investigated and he also falls very ill. Now, on his you know sickbed, he tells his wife a secret about some a fortune that he has, right? And she's meant to like keep that fortune until things blow over and, and until the investigation is over and things like that. Now, this um, series, I was looking forward to it because I haven't seen that many series based in the north, you know, in the northern part of Nigeria. If you're a fan of Sons of the Caliphate, which I think is a net, not a Netflix, a series on DSTV and Showmax, I think you'll enjoy this series as well. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I was actually looking forward to this, like I said, because it's set in the north. I haven't seen that many um, dramas or telenovelas set in the north. There was that. And I haven't seen that many movies um, or series that Rahama Sadao has been in. She's a huge star, but I haven't seen that many things that she's been in. So I was looking forward to this one on that account. Now, this review, I wasn't sure if I should make it a spoiler-free review or a spoiler-filled review. So what we're going to do is that it's going to be both. The first half of this review will be spoiler-free, but the second half will contain spoilers because this series, at the end of it, I had several questions and I'm sure many of you who've already seen it will have those same questions and it's probably why you're, why you're watching this review as well, okay? But for the benefit of those of you who haven't seen the series and may want to see it, the first half, like I said, will be spoiler-free. So let's get that portion out of the way. If you um, like the kind of series that they show on um, Africa Magic and, you know, DSTV Showmax, the, the indigenous ones, the ones made in Nigeria, I do believe you will like um, the plan. It does have that vibe of a, of a you know, telenovela, like a drama and the types of ones particularly that you see on um, DSTV. And I think many of the people that were involved with Sons of the Caliphate were involved with this um, series, The Plan, as well. So if you've seen those series, you haven't seen The Plan yet, go and watch The Plan and come back. It's, it's five episodes. Each episode is around 40 minutes. And um, it's engaging, but... Uh, it will you, each at the end of each episode you want to come back to see what happens in the sub in the subsequent episode or in the next episode and the acting let's talk about that the performances in the in the series rahama sadao does a good job um it also stars ali nuhu mofed duncan um yakubu mohammed is also in it uh paul sambo is in it and Onyinye Ezekwe and rosie muir so the cast is not too bad actually and the acting isn't too bad and you know um it's it's believable for people who live in the north most of whom are affluent the affluence element isn't as much or as high up as it should be they could have done a lot more to make the characters look more opulent but it's it's still okay it's still manageable so based on the acting i think you will enjoy it especially if you like you know those types of series like i said the ones that you, they have on DSTV and Africa Magic. What I liked about this film, or sorry, with about this series, and without giving away spoilers yet, I liked that it wasn't set in Lagos. I liked that, you know, I'm looking at Northern characters and just life in, I think Abuja, it was set in Abuja. I liked that because I don't see that very often, to be honest. So I liked that it was different in that regard. The acting wasn't too bad. The plot of the of the series even though it did have several loopholes i like how it was imaginative and it was um they tried to do things differently and they did touch on several social issues because in this thing there are one or two characters in the series who who, who are trying to have kids so there's the element of you know ivf and uh, adoption and all that in it there's also the element of you know stealing government funds and embezzling and um just the greed that surrounds african africa well, some african people in government and how much they steal and how the lengths to which they steal money there's that element that they touched on as well it touched on a few social issues i liked that but like i said more importantly i the plot was well thought out even though there were loopholes 
so yes if any of these things sound like you know something that that's up your alley or something that you can vibe with then please go and see the plan on netflix it's five episodes like i said if you like um, rahama sadao if you like ali nuhu um if you like paul sambo mufed duncan i think you will enjoy it it does take a bit of patience to get through but if you're used to series like like this like i said you will enjoy it so please you can end the review here if you haven't seen the plan go and watch it on netflix and then come back for the second half of this review for the rest of you who are still watching i imagine you've seen the plan and like me you have lots of questions and things you want to discuss so yes the rest of you now is your time so the plot generally just quick recap ali nuhu the alaji you know he he dies tells his wife played by rahama sadao where a trunk full of gold is and who she should collect it from she collects it and then you know she's she's just stunned about what to do with it she splits it in two keeps half of the gold gives the other half to her two friends um myro and um atika who she trusts but those two babes actually betray her one gives it to her husband to you know do business with another one starts you know liquidate not liquidating the gold well yeah liquidating it turning it in, into cash to establish her own factory so her two friends essentially betray her one of these two friends is atika like i said and she's the one who gets robbed in, during the robbery somebody loses his life we don't even know how he loses his life in during that robbery and they don't show us what happens i hope i had hoped that by the final episode they would have showed us or shown us rather what happened during that robbery they don't also the whole fact that atika had like a split personality disorder she was possessed with you know another personality that apparently was strong and was a bit crazy and that just felt very convenient and it, it barely had any place in the story essentially that split personality they would tell us or they want us to imagine is what saved her during the robbery it just didn't really sit well it felt like her having that kind of issue should have been should have had more of an impact in, in the general story it didn't so at the end of the day it just felt incredibly convenient another thing that was incredibly convenient was when in the final episode when atika and myro are fighting in the bedroom and it looks like atika is actually going to pop myro all of a sudden myro's husband um tanko he enters the bedroom and he you know hits um atika you know on, on the back of the head and she she's out that she's gone you know she's not even unconscious she's she's done for that felt incredibly convenient how did he get into the room how did he get into the compound after um atika even passes away no police investigation they show us that there's cctv footage the police don't you know they don't try and acquire that cctv footage not to mention that earlier there was a robbery in this same house and you know where was the cctv cctv footage back during that robbery so many things weren't adding up and then you know in the final episode in the final sequence when we actually find out that alinu whose character laji who we thought had passed away in episode one i'll come back to that because they don't even show us the funeral or anything regarding you know alaji when he passes away but they just let us know that at the end of the whole thing in the final episode he's not actually dead he's alive he comes back and apparently he he planned the entire thing or he knew how people were going to how they're going to just proceed with the gold he knew that his wife was going to give part of the gold to uh, myro and atika he knew that myro was going to hand over the gold to her husband tanko he knew that at, um, atika was going to liquidate the gold and turn it into cash and use it to do her own thing and then he he it's not possible <laughs> it just wasn't possible for him to have known things were going to pan out the way they did and it wasn't possible for him to know several things you know that it was, when they were just unraveling everything at the end of episode episode five it just seemed incredibly implausible and what felt even more implausible was the fact that his wife rahama sadao's character i forget her name now that she anticipated once she found out that he was still alive she anticipated what he was going to do and she now partnered with um nelson played by mofe duncan to actually get the gold the original gold to get another buyer so she's actually with or she knows where the actual gold is and the gold that you know her cousin came to drop off in that episode was actually not real gold it was very unlikely that nelson would have betrayed alaji 
especially after Alaji had given him a billion naira and you know sided or partnered with um with Karama. It was just it, it so many things were implausible, so many things were incredibly convenient, and I was trying to go along with the story up until episode five when they were just saying, Oh, actually. I knew this and oh actually I had paid this person oh actually I knew this person was going to do that how at the end of the day they really wanted um Karama to look like the her the heroine in this thing and to make her look like she was on top of the whole thing where where whereas in actual fact she couldn't have been that resourceful or that prescient to have known how things were going to turn out it just was incredibly implausible for things to have happened the way they did, especially with there being so many players in this very complicated web of deceit. So I, I, at some point, it just didn't feel believable anymore. I think now I've just dived into, you know, I've taken a dive into the deep end of what I didn't like about the plan. And it, it really did have promise. I was going along with it from episodes one to four, even though, like I said, several things just didn't seem implausible. For example, in episode, was it one or two, where... Alaji passes away. Alaji was a big deal in the NNPC and he was being investigated for corruption. If he passed away, there should have been a huge ceremony, a huge burial. The people should have known where his body was. How did he fake his death? They didn't explain that. They didn't bother to explain that. And, you know, it just, it just felt very, it felt lazy, like lazy writing, first of all. And it just felt incredibly convenient. And this whole series kind of rode on that you know, things happening very conveniently or for convenience sake, just so that the story could move along and just so Karama could look like the hero at the end of the day. They were trying to make it make sense, but it, it was a far stretch of the imagination for, for, for different characters in this thing to have done the things they had done or known what they had known or partnered with who they partnered with or double crossed who they had double crossed, if that all makes sense. So, I, I got it, but at the same time, it wasn't making sense. It wasn't adding up. You know, it was one of those, please, make it make sense type of situations. Um, did I enjoy it? I enjoyed it up to, up to episode five. The acting was okay. It was refreshing to see something different. Uh, I like that it was set in Abuja. There were elements about it that I actually did enjoy. I was looking forward to each episode when I ended, you know, each episode. Um, so I was looking forward to the next episode when I ended each episode. But they were just taking too many liberties and they were stretching way too much in this series and the way it ended too with that guy you know when uh baba and uh karama are like in the fields talking and this guy one guy random guy comes and says oh i, I found something i found something what was that about it just it didn't make sense and it didn't feel like it had any bearing on the series and ak that character you know at the end of the day what was his what was the point of him being there he robbed um, Atika when Atika passed away, but and he was he was a very annoying character. He seemed like he had a serious role to play in the first couple of episodes, like the first three episodes. But in the final, like two episodes, you just wonder what all the hype or the build up with um, AK was. When at the end of the day, it just fell flat. He just seemed really relevant in the story. If you guys have seen the plan, let me know in the comment section down below what you thought about it. And if you enjoyed this review, please like it by clicking on the like button just underneath the video and subscribe to my channel as well by clicking on the black subscribe button. On this channel, I don't just do Nollywood movie reviews. I also talk about relationships. To check out some of my past relationship videos or my past reviews, you can click the card in the corner of the screen. And also be sure to check out my review of Before Valentine's, which I have filmed just before this review. I'll also be filming a review of um, Dark October, the new film about the Alu 4, which has got a lot of people talking anyway. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, like, subscribe, and share, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.